So we're going to make this profile for this mini LED moving head, uh, beam moving head light. Uh, there is no profile for this fixture. I wouldn't expect there to be. This is just a very cheap knockoff of a knockoff light. So let's get into it. First thing that you want to do is go to setup. And we're going to go patch. This brings up our patch here. What we want to do is we want to go to the fixture builder. And then we're going to go here and we're going to create new type. So when you say current type, you click new type, you can give it a name and we're just going to give it a very simple name right here and we're just going to call it a LED beam for short, just for the sake of time. You can get as detailed as you want. Next thing you want to do is go to basic. We're going to delete the first uh, channel. It gives us a intensity on the first channel just as a basic setup. We don't need that because this fixture uh, on its first channel, if we look here, we can see that the first four channels are occupied by pan, fine pan, tilt, and fine tilt. So we're going to do that. So we deleted that first one, but now it gives us a um, plus and a red X. We want to click on the plus. And what we want to click on is for 8-bit and 16-bit. 8-bit means that uh, pan and tilt are just two channels, but if you have pan and fine pan and um, tilt and fine tilt, that's going to be four channels, so that would be a 16-bit. So we're going to click on 16-bit because that's the setup that we have. The next thing that we're going to look at right here is the uh, pan and tilt speed. Now, uh, we're going to click on the, the plus symbol here. This fixture doesn't actually have, um, or this, this basic interface does not allow us to input um, that kind of control. We can do it in the more advanced sections, but we're not going to get into that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to go down here where it says constant, and we're going to hit the plus symbol, and we're going to add it as a constant. That zero represents that on channel number five for this fixture it's always going to be outputting a zero and we can check that that's okay because if we look here it says the speed of x and y from fast to slow so basically what this is telling me is is that uh, when the fader is all the way down for channel five or when the the output is zero on that specific channel it's going to the the fixture is going to move at its fastest speed and then the the closer that you get to 255 or the equivalent of having this fader for channel number five all the way up, it will be at its slowest speed. Now in all the years that I've been doing lighting, I've actually never, um, or very, very, very rarely had a reason to actually change um, the, the speed of the fixture uh, in the console. It's always been in programming, so I always leave that at zero anyway, because um, it can mess with you, because you, you'll be, yeah, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, Next thing up is the dimmer. That's going to be considered intensity. We're going to click on here. Now this is only just a single channel intensity. There's no uh, dim or intensity or fine intensity. So we're going to click on 8-bit. We're going to go here to the next one, which is number 7. That's strobe. So we're going to go, we have a simple strobe. There's no uh, random strobe. There's no ramping. There's no nothing like that. It's just uh, if the fader is all the way down on channel 7, the equivalent of the fader all the way down channel 7 it will um, be open and then once you get above 1% it'll start flashing at that rate. The next thing that we have here is red, green, blue, and white since this is an LED fixture we're gonna go in here and we see here that our color mix we have RGB, RGBW, RGBWA, cyan, um, magenta, and yellow uh, for these first three are for LED fixtures and this last one is going to be if you have uh, a, a moving head fixture that has diacrylic glass but we just have an LED light so we're just going to click on RGBW. So essentially this fixture has been built. There is one key feature that I want to tell you about that you must turn off in order for this to work correctly. If we go to functions, if you look here where it says virtual intensity, we want to deselect all of these because otherwise when you go to turn up the intensity on the fixture, nothing will come out of the out of the fixture. It'll just be dark and you'll wonder what did you do wrong? It's this virtual intensity. I've had this problem a lot with LED lights. Uh, so any type of LED fixture, you want to make sure that this virtual intensity is turned off in the functions menu. We're going to build this light. We passed, so we're going to hit OK. Everything's fine. So now what we're going to do 
is we're actually going to patch this fixture and we're going to double check and make sure that everything is working correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to fixture scheduler. Now on the most latest version of um, the HOG4 software, I believe they actually moved it so that all the user built fixtures are at the top, which is fantastic because I always wanted to have a button. Um, but this is the second or the third from the last um, revision. I haven't updated this because I'm running this on a Windows 7 machine and uh, the latest and greatest version only runs on Windows 10 and I didn't want to make the leap of faith just yet. So we're going to scroll down here where it says user created and we can see here LED beam we're going to click on that. We're going to patch one of them. Now I have a lot of other fixtures patched in here and I want to have this LED way out of the way because I need to patch a couple other lights uh, lower down in the patch. So what I'm going to do is I have this set up here. I have one fixture and I'm going to hit OK. So there's the fixture right there. Now if you ever need to uh, this is a this is a side note for for helping anybody that's just learning this this system. Uh, if you ever have a fixture that you want to patch in a totally different um, channel than what the the fixture or, or the the lighting desk will actually put everything in order uh, in succession, which is fantastic. But sometimes you need to patch fixtures on different channels for different reasons. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit on the keypad here. And let me get this out of the way. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the at symbol. And what this is going to do is this is going to bring up our patch window. I'm on universe number one. And now what I'm going to do is because I've hit the at symbol, you can see in the command line at the bottom left here, it says patch at. It's, it's basically the board is saying, okay, where do you want to patch it at? I want to patch it at 300 and then I'm going to hit enter and now if you look here we can see that the fixture has actually gone to its 50 50 uh, position which means that the tilt is at 50 percent and the pan is at 50 percent the reason that the lighting desk does this is because if you ever needed to move say for example in that direction and you need to point down it takes less time for the for the moving head to go that way than if it was like say for example at zero zero which is all the way twisted to counterclockwise or clockwise and uh, p tilted all the way down in one direction it just makes it so that when it's at fifty percent and fifty percent it's it's a lot less uh, distance to travel between one direction and the other that's that's why the the desk makes it makes the fixture do that it'll make all fixtures do this uh, and that's a good way to know if your profile is incorrect is if you for example have a moving head that has a pan like bigger than 520 degrees there are some fixtures that have 750 degrees um, so depending on your fixture you can tell if everything is working correctly if um, the yolk is centered in both x and y axis evenly if you have it where it's kind of tilted off axis a little bit or off axis in another direction you might have to change um, some settings so anyway this is working now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pan and you can see that the pan is working. And you can see it's off just a little bit in the pan direction, so I might have to look into that. There's the tilt. Okay, and we're going to bring up the intensity here. And there's the intensity being brought up, and it automatically mixes the um, red, green, and blue together. It doesn't bring up uh, white by default, it, but it makes a dirty white with the red, green, and blue. Uh, so you can go into the board now, and if you want to, uh, you can see here that we have intensity, pan, tilt, and strobe. We're going to test the strobe real quick. Okay, there's the strobe. Another little cool feature, if you didn't know about it, instead of having to turn the, um, the encoder wheel here all the way up, between whatever direction you're trying to go. If you hold down the plus symbol and just turn it slightly in one direction or the other, it will actually bring whatever value you're working with, rather it be strobe intensity, pan tilt, whatever, um, all the way to its highest intensity. And if you turn it in the opposite direction, it'll turn it in, in, in the lowest direction. 
so you can see how I'm making the, the light strobe full, full strobe and, and no strobe at all, which is a really useful feature. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on intensity. It's going to bring up another menu here, and we can see here that we have red, green, blue, and white. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, the intensity has already been brought up, which means that the master fader here has been up to brought up to 100%, which means that the light will output 100% of its output power. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn on just the red. The way that I did this is in where you have the eye red, green, blue, and white, uh, I'm telling it, okay, now just output just red. And now I'm going to do just green, just blue, and just white. So that is everything working. Uh, I did uh, leave out, again, the pan tilt speed, but I have rarely, if ever, used that function on a moving headlight. And I, I think for the sake of getting your show up and running with the fixture that you're trying to work with, I think this is the fastest way to do it. Don't worry about that function on if, you're, if your light has it. So hopefully this was useful to you guys. If you guys liked uh, what you saw and this was useful or at least entertaining, please give it a, a like and uh, subscribe for more. And I hope to see you guys uh, back on the next video. Take care.